All right, so in the U.S. Catholics, um, in the U.S. Catholic Bishop statement, uh, the first question that we had to address was, "What does the Lord, or why does the Lord call the Church to have concern for and serve individuals with disabilities, and in what ways does Jesus exemplify this call?" Um, <clears throat> um, you know, the Lord calls us to have concern and serve individuals with disabilities because. Um, it's right in the in the Ten Commandments says love your neighbor as yourself. Um, and as Catholics, we believe that every life is dignified and every life is, um, you know, worth um, everything. You know, it's the most important thing, and we have to uphold that as best we can. Um, and uh, one of the biggest things is like you know, Jesus, he always preached, you know, about people that had problems, um, whether they were physical or spiritual, um, but he didn't seek out those who were, you know, wealthy or doing well. Um, he always went to the poor and the people in need. Um, he always sought out the people of the Beatitudes, you know. Um, <clears throat> and human rights are inalienable, so no matter what, um, life is precious, and we have to uphold that. And, you know, every life is worth living to its fullest extent. Um, and one of the coolest things that I read in the um, article, it said, you know, um, we can learn just as much from disabled people as we can teach them. And they're really good role models for us because they're living in the shadow of the cross. You know, their, their disability um, is their cross that they carry every single day. And I think that, you know, you can learn a lot from them, <clears throat> even more so than we can probably help them. And teach them. Um, the second statement was, oh, so so I feel that you know Jesus calls, or the concern is because, and we're called to help them because that's exactly what Jesus did, and um, he exemplifies the call, and in everything that he did, he was always helping the poor, he was always helping the sick, the the broken, the lonely. Um, the second question is, in what ways do you feel the pastoral statement could be updated? Um, my first one is, I think that the, they could probably use more you know, person first language. I, I read in there that they, they would say like the blind parishioner or the deaf parishioner um, where they, you know, they could switch that around, you know, say the parishioner who is blind or who cannot see or can't hear is hard of hearing. Um, so that's one. And then the second one is like more specifics as to how the church can help and how the church requests us to help and serve um, and maybe examples of how to do that. Um, and the last question is reflecting on the, <clears throat> on two statements. Um, uh, what is your response as a church? Um, do a good job with outreach and discipleship of individuals with disabilities and how is it demonstrated? Um, I think it does a great job. Um, I think that, you know, as active pro-lifers, one of the biggest things the church does is, is stand against abortion. Um, and, and really just life in, and stand for life in general in, in any way, whether it's um, euthanasia or suicide, anything. Um, it's always, you know, churches are some of the biggest charitable organizations. They're always raising money to donate to, you know, um, to help poor, the poor and the sick um, and to help pr uh, programs. Um, and I found, what I find most interesting was, I you know, I love how the... It was just, again, going back to how I love how they express that, you know, those with disabilities can really teach us and that they're not asking us to pity them and to help them in that way, but it's more of to include them into normal life because it's exactly what they deserve. <clears throat> and I thought that the image of, of them living in the shadow of the cross was just fantastic. So thank you.